Welcome to the ACS Technical Advisory Board podcast series, where we talk all things tech including data, cyber, AI, blockchain, and Internet of Things. Meet your host, Dr. David Cook, Vice President of the Australian Computer Society's Technical Boards. David is a technology advocate dedicated to advances and progression of computing and human-computer interaction. In this episode, David will be talking with Neil Templey on the topic of the transformation of smart cities, IoTs, and how we incorporate cyber and IoT with transport and logistics. Today, we're going to talk to Neil Templey. Neil believes in technology as a driver of transformation. He has had extensive experience from a research background, but now his main focus is in smart cities. Neil, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It's good to be here. Let's start with a tough question. Does the emergence of IOTs in Australia change the way we think about programming? Do we need to have different skills? Is it getting easier or, or harder? Yeah, look, I wouldn't claim to be an uh, expert IOT programmer. I've, I've been programmed embedded systems at assembler level in the past, but, but the whole IOT thing, I think, brings a whole new gamut of challenges. And one of those is you're just dealing with many, many devices each device is a potential security hole. Uh, you've just increased the number of security weaknesses in your system. And so I think that that's probably the biggest challenge is do you, do you tackle that by design? Do you tackle that by very quick response when you find something going wrong? That would be the core challenge. So certainly cybersecurity has always been uh, connected with IoTs and, and the lack thereof, I suppose, compared to many of the other aspects of IT. But I I wonder whether that means that do we need to make sure that it's something which is part of the design? Or really, is it the case that we should be asking more of our uh, cybersecurity community to to take on the heavy lifting in regards to IoTs? You've got to have good designs. You've got to have good, robust designs. If you're dealing with a weak design, then, uh, you know, the the programmer might be dealing with, with a system that's fundamentally flawed at its core levels. That's just not going to work. So... Uh, secure software, really important. Secure, you know, um, firmware, really, really important. Could I ask you about uh, transport and logistics? I know that in the past uh, you uh, you led uh, the NICTA Transport and Logistics Living Lab, um, and uh, I wonder since then, could you comment? What's the emerging, the changing needs in terms of transport and logistics from an IoT perspective? So these days, many more items are being tracked. You know, a modern truck will be tracked. The driver may even have a camera on them, uh, which sounds quite invasive, uh, but but it helps if they have an accident that, to show that the driver wasn't responsible or if they are, you know, struggling with sleep or some other issue, then, then you know, the company can, can be on top of it very quickly. Uh, so, so goods are being tracked more and more. We did some container level tracking. That's still not that, that common, but, but you can see the natural trend. The natural trend is to know where your goods are, how they're how they're faring in their journey. Uh, so these are following fairly predictable lines in in many ways. As the technology gets cheaper, better, easily programmable, easily accessible, then we'll be putting more tracking devices on more pieces of uh, logistics equipment. Does it ever one worry you about the cost of some of uh, implementing some of these things? That sometimes they're a little bit frivolous because. You know, we, if we track everything, when, where does it stop? At what point do we stop tracking things? Look, it's a really good question. I think, I think the, the better question for in the transport logistics field and mobility in general, so people mobility, is what does a really good system look like? You know, it's, there's, a, there's a real danger in the smart cities, uh, future mobility, future transport logistics space to let technology start leading you down the path. So you start this evolutionary process when really you've got all these brand new tools that are quite capable of, of taking you down different paths. So, so rather than take an evolutionary process, I've been a strong advocate for sitting back and saying, look, what does a really good mobility system look like and feel like from the different stakeholders' perspectives? What does really good logistics look like and feel like? And then what are the requirements on the system? And that leads you to what do you need out of your IoT devices? So I'm a big advocate of a top-down approach. And by that, I don't mean it's government's job to do a complete design. I think government plays a key role in understanding, um, creating a shared vision of what this could look like and what these core elements should look like. So the framework, the blueprint, if you like, is something that government can take a strong lead in. The the goal of that in in transport logistics is just improving efficiency, improving outcomes. Massively improved if you have a coordinated effort 
as opposed to to literally hundreds of different companies working independently, uh, creating you know congestion and, and quite a mess when things go wrong. Um, you're on record for saying that there that we should be using new tools to achieve new goals. Yeah. What does that mean in terms of IOTs? My concern in in the smart city space, which is where I sort of finished my my working career with CSIRO, was that I could see that uh, it's a very technology driven space, and even though uh, people have tried to step back from that, the smart cities flavor of technology driven is is still too strong. And now we talk about data driven, you know, and there's a kind of a reason for it. We want things to be evidence driven. We want data to to rule the decisions, but it's 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 a really poor mindset. Uh, and the, the best ex, best kind of analogy I can use is is if you're a builder and an alien came to you with a with a new kind of ray gun that could weld wood to cement to to any other material to steel. Uh, and if you walked around with your ray gun using it to knock in nails, that's that's a really bad example of how to use new technologies. You might replace your nails by using your ray gun. And okay, that's a better use of technologies. And that's kind of where we are in smart cities. Uh, but the best approach of all is to think, well, gee, how would we do buildings differently? We now have this new great, amazing tool. How would we rethink buildings? You know, that maybe we can make structures that are a totally different shape, different function. That's that's what's missing. That's what's really, really missing. We're, we're going down the approach of trying to do incremental improvements when perhaps the new tools are so radical that um, you should consider, you know, a redesign. So uh, let me ask you, how do we do that? I mean, how do we get people to change their mindset and change the way they think about things? Because people get very, if you, if you think about IOTs and their application into simple things in terms of trades and so on, People get very you know, used to thinking a particular way. They don't like change. How do you get people to change? <laughs> a million dollar question. Um, I, I think uh, any vision has to be a shared vision. When it comes to developing and innovating, we know that you've got to get the customer on board and the customer is your citizens of Australia. Um, there's plenty of smart city examples where people have gone the, the whole hog of, well, let's just put in lots of technology. We're not sure what we're doing yet, but we'll gather lots and lots of data because data is good, isn't it? You know, and, and lots of CCTV cameras and so forth. Google tried it in, in Toronto uh, and then sort of abandoned that for perhaps other reasons, but they certainly got pushback from the, from the citizens. And so it's really important to, to engage your citizens and it's not that easy to develop shared visions, but, but that's my personal view on your best approach. Get that shared vision. What, is, what does sustainability mean? What does future mobility mean? What could it look like? What's that opportunity to get it right? And then as good engineers, we all know, okay, now, you've, now you know what your goal is. You can start looking at your requirements and that should flow down to your IoT systems, of course. I want to go back to the comments you made about the importance of mobility across Australia. Yep. From a, like a high-level strategy point of view, what's the big challenge facing Australia in terms of mobility? I think it's less about the challenges and more about the opportunity. What's the missed opportunity in in mobility? So if, if we sat down around a whiteboard and said, what does ideal mobility feel like? And what are the information flows to to support that? Uh, I think we'd come to, to a conclusion that's not going to vary a lot around the world. And in fact, we see elements of this. Uh, and that vision should drive, ideally, what we do. <clears throat> Instead, we see bottom-up technology-driven things you know we we track our buses we tell people when the bus is going to arrive we we uh tell people how full the bus is going to be that's not great for guaranteeing outcomes you know if you've already committed to catching catching a bus and it turns up full whether you've been told that five minutes in advance or 10 minutes in advance or not it's not good enough to guarantee an outcome so <clears throat> i think being vision driven about how do you guarantee outcomes for the different stakeholders how do you reduce uncertainty is the is the key and then out of that flows very naturally uh, the kind of technologies you need, the information flows you want, uh, and, and perhaps it's not the right place to unpack that. But but again, it's it's a design driven, top down driven, requirements driven approach, uh, which is not rocket science to do. It's just not being done, and it's not anyone's particular job. So how do we how do we refocus IOTs? Um, away from the engineering side of the conversation and more into the application side of the conversation. How do we make that change happen? I think I think it's kind of a little bit of everyone's job. I, I you know, in a sense, the vision for what mobility could be, what sustainability could be, and requires, 
is a bit of a shared activity, you know, from every engineer should go, oh, hang on a minute, look, do you know, really know why you're putting in this device, you know, and what are you going to do with that data and, and, and why are you collecting that data in the first place? And what are the consequences if that data is hacked or, or counterfeit data is substituted? You know, I think that's a, perhaps another skill. We talked about security. There's another skill of what is the impact of that device being spoofed in some way? Does it end up with a dam opening its gates or, you know, something really bad? So, so there's a whole discipline there as well of, of just asking the question of why are we doing this and what's the best way of doing this? And it's everybody's responsibility. I think, you know, everybody makes a decision in the design chain and everyone should be asking those questions and perhaps we'll get to that more customer-driven, top-down approach in the end. Neil Templey, thanks for your time today. Look, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. To find out more about how the ACS is powering Australia's technology brilliance, visit us at our website, Facebook or LinkedIn. Want to get involved with the ACS technical boards? Email us at tab at acs.org.au and tell us a bit about yourself. Join us for more thought leadership, ideas and information through our other podcasts on the ACS YouTube, Facebook or on LinkedIn.